Hi friends, how you doing? This is Justin Mergliani from Just For You Training and Consulting. And what I wanted to do is just give you a quick tutorial about how to create a pivot table. Uh, pivot tables really do a great job of analyzing very large amounts of data in really no time at all. And what you're looking at on my screen is what we would really consider a data dump. It's just a bunch of data. It's got reps who have been selling uh, clothing. Uh, the table shows the line of clothing that they've been selling, what type of clothes, what the products are, what region they're selling in, how much they're selling, what the price is, and of course the total, uh, the dollars that they've made from the sales. Uh, and I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and I want to see how fast you can answer them. First question is, who is our top seller? If you look at all those reps, who's the top seller? Is it Justin? Is it Amy? Is it Rebecca? I don't know. Looking at this data dump, there's no way for me to tell. Or how about the line of clothing? What line sells the most? Do we sell more uh, women's clothing? Or do we sell more men's clothing or children's clothing? What, which one? Which is the top line of clothing? Which is the lower, the lowest, the one that sells the least? I don't know. I don't know. Same thing with products. I don't know. Do we sell more shirts than pants? I don't know. Do we sell more sweaters than hats? I can't answer that. I also can't answer what region is our top selling region. Do we do most of our sales in the north versus the west versus the south versus the east? The bottom line is when you're looking at a data dump that you see right here, it is impossible to answer those questions. Now, you could spend a ton of time writing a bunch of different formulas to try to get the answers to those questions, or you can do what's called a pivot table. And again, a pivot table analyzes large amounts of data very, very quickly and very, very easily. Not a lot of work to do. And to be honest with you, the first step is already done. The first step is to have data. And I do, I have a spreadsheet here. Now, the key to starting the pivot table is to be clicked anywhere in the data. You don't necessarily have to be in A1. You can be anywhere in this data set and the reason is because all of the columns in the rows are consecutive. There are no breaks in the rows and columns at all. So I want to start here. Where am I? Charlie 11. All right. C11. To create a pivot table, first step is to go to insert in the ribbon. The insert tab of the ribbon. You go to the insert tab of the ribbon because you want to put something more into this workbook you want to insert something okay well insert tab left hand side in the tables group you're going to see an option that says pivot table so i'll give that a click and check it out it selects all of the data because again the columns in the rows are consecutive so it doesn't ask me to drag and select data no it selects everything because there's no empty rows or, and no empty columns so it selected that range. Now, the next thing it says is, all right, fine. We've selected this data. Where do you want to put the pivot table? Now, you can put it on, its, on the same sheet with the existing data, but I would warn you against that. I think that becomes very, very cumbersome. So the option that it's set to by default is a good one. It says, put it on a new worksheet. So I'm going to click OK, and it's going to be on its own worksheet. All right, so now I'm in an entirely different worksheet, entirely different worksheet. Here's a pivot table. The pivot table uh, is really a shell right now. It doesn't have anything in it. I always tell my students, one of the first things you want to do when you're learning about a different part of an application is to get your bearings, know what you're looking at. So on this new sheet, and again, if you look at the bottom left-hand side of my screen, you're going to see sheet one. That's where the raw data was. And now you see sheet two, and that's where the pivot table is. So we're on a different sheet. Now, upper right-hand side of the screen, way up top in the ribbon, over here where I'm moving my mouse, 
This is called the Pivot Table Tools Contextual Tabs. Contextual tabs are tabs that come up on the ribbon based on the context of what you've selected. In this case, we're clicked on a pivot table, so we get Pivot Table Tools, Analyze and Design. The other thing is, on the right-hand side of the screen, I see the tip, uh, let me say that again, <laughs> pivot table field list, the pivot table field list. On the right-hand side of that screen in the pivot table field list, you see a listing of all of the column headings from the other data. Reps, line, products, region, all the way down to total. Now, here's what I would do. I think this is the fastest way to do it, in my opinion. Others might have different ways, but this is my opinion. If I want to decide what fields I want, I just check them off. So I put a check mark in reps and press the reps are now inside the pivot table. Maybe I also want to see a uh, region. I'll put a check mark in region. Region is inside the pivot table. And then maybe I want to put in uh, total for money, the, the, the money that they made off of the sale. So I'm going to total. Now, what happened? Let's take, let's take a look at what happened here. In the bottom right-hand side of the pivot table field list, here's the deal. The fields that I selected, when I put a check mark in them, if the fields were non-numeric, in other words, they were text, they went to rows. Look at the bottom right-hand side of the screen. I'll move my mouse on it now. There are the rows, reps and regions. Well, I knew that was going to happen because I know that they're not numeric. So Excel says, well, I don't know where you want to put them. If, if you tell me you want them in the pivot table, I'll put them in. But they'll go to rows by default because they're not numbers. However, to the right of that, look at the values. In values, it says it's the sum of total. And that's because the field total is numeric. If you remember, it was currency. Now, does that mean I'm stuck with this? Absolutely not. Maybe I want the regions to be columns instead of the rows. So watch this. I'm going to go to that bottom right-hand side where it says rows. There's reps and there's region. And I'm going to literally drag region from rows and drop it into this white box over here where it says columns and drop it there and look at what happens. Look at what happens. Pivot table is different. Now, the rows are the reps. The reps are the people. The columns, east, north, south, west, those are the columns of the data. Now, very quickly, one thing I would do in this case, because it gets very difficult to read if you don't have the, uh, the numbers formatted properly, the quick way to format numbers, you won't believe this in pivot tables, real simple. You go to any cell you want with a number in it, you right click your mouse, you go to number format, and there it pops up here. And then what I would do is just go over to uh, currency, and I'll lob off the decimal places since we're not using uh, change. I'll just get rid of the decimal places and click OK. How cool is it that you don't have to select all of the cells? All you have to do is right click on the data, one of the cells. Now, if you look at this, I can answer some of the questions that I couldn't answer before. It says, well, who's, who's our top seller? Well, it looks like it's Alex, 12,258. So Alex is the top seller. Uh, what region is my top selling region? Well, it looks like North, 23,658. These are questions that I had no way of answering with the data dump. And you can add more data as well. I can go in and say, well, I want to see a uh, line too. So I'll go back to the field list and put a check mark in line. And now I have a breakdown by person in line of what they sold, which is pretty cool. If I want line first, over here in the bottom right hand side, I'll grab reps in the row area and drag it below line and drop it. And now I have a breakdown of line first and then indented below the line are the reps. 
These are the things that I'm going to teach you in the classes that it really will be lifelong skills. This stuff's not going away. In fact, it's going to be more prominent as we continue to go forward into the future. So I would really want to invite everybody, the, uh, the uh, package that I have for training, I can take you literally from a novice computer user to an expert in a year. And when I say a year, I'm talking about one class a month. Just 12 days of training, that's it, and you will be a computer expert at the level of the top 5% of the United States, the United States workforce. So if you want to learn cool things like this, please check me out. Uh, you can check me out on my Facebook page or go to justforutc.com and uh, let me know if you want to sign up. But again, just 12 days of training and you're going to be an expert and be able to do things like this that really only 5% of the American workforce can do. All right, if you want more lessons, check back. I'll be showing some more later. Thanks a lot.